Today we have Jackie Wadsworth here with, am I frozen? Oh, I think I might be frozen. You're not frozen. Oh, that's weird. I froze my computer. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, we have Jackie Wadsworth here with Bridal Boutiques US and the Gilded Gown in Knoxville, Tennessee. She is here to talk to us today about connecting with brides on social media. Um, she's had wild success in her career and has made quite um, a production of her own social media. So we're super excited to learn from her and her expertise. Um, my name is Sarah Hamilton. I am on the marketing team at the Merchandise Mart. We are super excited that you all joined us today and we are looking forward to this informative webinar. So Jackie, I'll let you get started and um, introduce yourself and then we'll do about 45 or 45 minutes of this and then 15 minutes of questions at the end. So we'll, if you have any questions as you go along, send them through the chat or the Q&A. Awesome. Hey, I'm so glad to see you guys. I know most of you and I'm sure you guys know me too. I have a big mouth. That's loud. <laughs> But anyway, um, as usual, our store has had just great success using social media. It changed my life. And I can't shut up about it because I got consistently paid. I've, I had years of sometimes you get paid, sometimes you don't, sometimes you struggle. Are we going to make payroll? I don't worry about that anymore. Well, until just recently with all this COVID stuff. But with planning and getting back in the saddle. We got 87 brides booked for June bookings. And that was with three works of that, three weeks of ads running on top of, we kept some ads running before that. And of course we showed up every day on our social media. So even in hard times, if you keep showing up every day, and you keep doing your posts and you keep doing your ads, you keep developing those relationships. And that is the name of the game. We are the engagement people. And I love that in social media, engagement is a word that we get to use and that you need to understand because we are those people. We engage with our brides every single day and when they visit us, but also before they visit us, when they find us on social media. The rest of the world is online, so we have to be online too. And how do we do that so that we are engaging with the brides, not just being at them all the time? We want to be with them. Social is a with relationship. So I'm going to flip the screen here, and I've got some pictures that I kind of want to talk about because how we engage with brides is also branding. When you show up online every day, your branding. So I am going to try very hard to do this right. So bear with me. There we go. Bear with me a second. Okay. So now I have to make this larger. Can you guys see that okay? Is that large enough on the screen? Oh. Now, that is my logo. That is not my brand. It is my logo. It is part of my brand. So there's a big difference between your logo and your brand. You have to use it, but you don't want to overuse it. Like every post, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram, that is, it already has your name on it. And if you're wise, you'll be using your logo as your icon. So then you can have your logo and your name and then the visuals and words that go with the post, your branding, your logo is part of it, but it's not the whole story. It's a sidecar to your story. So how many people know who this person is that's on the screen right now? Does anybody know her name just off the top of your head? You don't have to tell us, but just, I bet you do. This woman, her stage name being Flo, uh, she, she branded in insurance as fun. I mean, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? But that's what's possible when you have an eye to the world. You brand yourself, not necessarily how she did it, because that's not really our gig. But if this woman being a little quirky can make insurance fun, 
then you and I can make bridal fun. And that is one of the biggest things that people are looking for. They want that connection and authenticity. And authenticity for most of us involves a little bit of quirky. So share yourself with people and they will know your name and they will know your logo too. But your logo is not your brand. It's just part of your story. So next thing, how many people know what show this is? You can do your little screens, names. Notice in the background, they have their name right back here. This is beautiful way in your store around your photo opportunity places to get your name in there again. We use little signs and we have our photo op places, which you'll see later that have our name in it with our logo even. So you know who this is because they're very present. They're super popular and they're not popular because they used pictures of designer dresses. They show real people wearing designer dresses. And I put it to you that you can do the same thing. If you're showing designer pictures on your website or on your social media, that's really about, that's part of your brand, but it's not you. Your job is to do what Kleinfeld has done and personalize designer dresses on your brides. And then you be as well known as these people. When we go to um, bridal shows, I've had people ask for my autograph before. They're like, you, we follow your Facebook and your Instagram, we love you. And, and it's like they already know us. And, and that's what it's about. That's building the relationship online so that when you finally meet them, they feel like they know you. And isn't that what our job is all about too, is building that trust. So you definitely want to do more of what Kleinfeld's did. Show your brides in your dresses and make it about your store. You're, just imagine your name right there and your face and your stylist and your brides wearing your dresses because that's what you do. Here's another one. And again, this is a different place in the store, but notice there's that sign again right above his head. This is a beautiful, you know, it's a side branding note. So you can be branding, you can use your name, but again, the bigger story is this. Their face, his face is happy, the bride's face is happy. You can see details on the dress. This is how you tell your story online. You make it personal. Now this definitely says something about our store. See, we had a big wooden cutout made of our logo and we have it right at checkout. So let me play this little boomerang for you. That is just so funny and a little bit quirky and silly. People love these things. And you can do that. We have a, we keep a tablet right at our checkout counter. You can do that too. Now let's go on to the next one. Um. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm I'm having, my computer is completely frozen and I can't turn my video off. So I'm sorry that you guys have to look at me right now. Um, I am That's trying okay. to figure it out behind the scenes, but just ignore me. <laughs> You're a little bit foggy, but I see, okay. I see the smile. It's like the mask. <laughs> we can see your smile behind the mask. Um, yeah. Okay. Just keep going. I'm going to see if I can figure this out, but obviously we're having a little few issues back here. After yesterday, this could only be just, right? <laughs> I had some technical difficulty yesterday because I understand advertising does not mean I am a computer technical person. <laughs> okay, another thing that this is internet gold, ladies, and I know I've talked to you about it before, and gentlemen, if you're out there, the twirl. The twirl is internet gold. You, you don't want to overuse it, but again, it's, it's just the business. Whether it's full speed like this one, I've had more people ask me how much does this dress cost from this little video because, I mean, just you can see the lace. It's just spectacular. And then here's another one. I think this is a slow motion one. I'm hoping this is the slow-mo. 
Well, maybe not. But again, we got a different view on it. We kind of came from above. And this is one of our stylists, Miss Emily. I'm sure y'all have seen her before. We She's in our NBSE um, ads and things that we do that we provide for the event for you guys to use on your pages too. So you'll be seeing more of her as we go along. Side note, if you haven't signed up for a national bridal sale event yet, this year is a super important year to do it. Talk about bringing your branding up a level because national bridal sale page and ads are gonna be driving people, people to you, specifically brides. We've got over $75,000 worth of support in the industry from the full page ad and other good things. Um, Bruce did a great job at finding lots of places to help us this year. Um, and of course, we'll also be doing um, bridal boutiques and me, of course, that's us. We'll be doing the ads in the post. So we'll be featuring you on the page and we'll also have ads going to brides near you. So let's go to the next thing. Here's another one of these boomerangs. And I did it just because it's so cute. We provide these silly glasses and we have all kinds of different yes signs. Um, usually we build a, um, a little balloon arch because those are real popular right now. Things like that you can do in your store. People love it. And it gives you another opportunity. If it's a busy Saturday and you have one group at your um, logo sign at the door on the way out, you can use your balloon arch and still get those fun, um, fun pieces of content that you're gonna share on your page. All right, maybe the, this may or may not be the slow motion one. Yes, at last, this is internet gold. When you do the slow motion twirl, and if you've got an iPhone, there's a setting for it. And I'm pretty sure that Androids now have a setting too, but you may have to go a little further to get to it. But, or you can use a video app that will put it into slow-mo for you. But it is so worth the work because every one of us or every bride most likely has that inner child that just identifies with that moment, how you feel when you put that dress on and that expression. And the smiles, you always want the smiles. We're blessed in that our stylists do a lot of modeling and that they really show, um, they really show the joy. And that is branding, right? Your brand is how you make people feel in your store. And even if it's your stylist doing these shoots with you, or it's a styled shoot that you do with other people in your community, this is the look you're going for. You want the joy. You don't want the, you know, you might have pensive bride, but you want all the shades of joy and happy that you can get because we are sharing a feeling when we're on our social media pages. And that is what brides engage with. When we're all talking about social media and what does engagement mean, engagement is a view, like on these videos, they're viewing the videos, or they're commenting, and like on that one twirl, I had so many people ask, how much is that dress? That's a comment, that is an engagement. If they like the post, that is an engagement. So you've got views, likes, comments, shares, when they share your post to their friends, that also gets you a ton of, um, clicks and clicks outside. It counts on your page, but it's on that person's page. So you get the benefit of their clicks too. Clicks are engagement. The higher your engagement, the sooner you get to the 10 to 12 views you need per bride so that she wants to book with you. Now, when I talk about this, you need 10 to 12 views per bride. That's kind of the, the equivalent of dating. Like if you've been married, just think about how many times did you go on dates with your sweetheart before you set the wedding date? It was probably more than 10. You might've known you wanted to marry him on day one or her, but you didn't do it until you had established a relationship. This is very similar to how women decide now where they're gonna shop and what they wanna buy. So your 10 to 12 views is the equivalent of setting the wedding date 
except with you, it's they're going to set their bridal booking. So the way you get to 10 to 12 views is with your daily posts and with ads that get people onto your social pages so that they get those 10 to 12 views to create an engaged relationship with you to shop in your store. So you're using your brand, which includes your logo, but is a very small part of it. Your brand and bridal is how you make people feel in your store. That is your store experience. So when you're getting content, you want to show the store experience. Oh, shoot, sorry about that. Going to the next one now. Okay, this beautiful picture. What does this say about your store? Just think about that a minute. It's a brand that you carry in your store, but what does it make you feel about the place you saw it? it? For me, it's a beautiful gown and I like beautiful gowns, but it doesn't say anything to me about that store. It says something to me about that designer and that's a good thing, but it's not as good as, and this is beautiful too, another gorgeous, another gorgeous picture. And that brand is a part of my store and they're a big part of my store. Love them to this day. But I show my pictures of their dresses, just like say yes to the dress. That dress will be shown in my store on my bride or my stylist in pictures that I've taken because I'm branding my brand. This is an associated brand with me, but I am wanting that bride to book with me. So I do it via my store content. Hey, Jackie, I'm so sorry yeah. to interrupt, but we're just getting some feedback in the Q and A that people can't see the photo you're referring to. Oh no. Well, I did the share screen. Should we try it again? Well, what number are you talking about right now? 11. Oh yeah. We can only see through number eight. Oh, uh, so maybe if you just scroll down. Huh? Well, I'm sitting here looking at it on my screen. That is so weird. Yeah. Let me pull over. Maybe that's it. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's sharing the other screen, not this one. I'm so sorry, you guys. That's okay. I just wanted to chime I'm in. I'm not and... a pro at this. That's probably what the problem is here. All right. Let me just put this down. And you guys didn't see the videos I was talking about. And I was doing the thing all around. So Oh, yeah. They missed we'll the videos too. So. Backtrack and try it again. So here we were. We saw, we already talked about all that. Here, this is the video that, can you see it now where it's twirling or is it still showing? No, we're just seeing the preview of your, um, your PC. Okay. The how about public. now? Are we up now? Uh, no. Nope. Okay. Let me go back. Sorry about that. Resume share. You guys bear with me just a second here. Now, can you see it? No. No. I do not understand. So if you're double clicking on one of those images, perhaps it's opening in a new window and that's just popping okay. off the, the screen share. All right. Let me unscreen share. How about that? Sorry about this. Um, going back here. I'm just going to stop the share and then we'll try again. Okay, so all right, so we'll have the, all these videos so that you can look at it. This one is the slow motion twirl. And now, since we can't do it this way, we'll just go on to the Facebook page and go through the, we're gonna look at some numbers because you gotta understand your numbers to make better ads. Can you see the two manufacturer pictures? Yes. 
Okay, good. So comparatively, these boomerangs, people twirling in the dress, very different feelings is what I'm trying to get at. We'll just scroll through the page a little bit and talk about it. So we all know what manufacturer pictures look like and they're beautiful and they're great on our website. They have their place. But your social media needs to be more like what they did on Say Yes to the Dress, where they're showing your dresses in your store instead of you're showing designer pictures on your social media. Your social media is for you. So now I'm gonna stop this share and then we're gonna go, I hope, to share on my page. So let me come back over here. Screen share. All right, do we all see my page? It says new location right across the top. Yes, I think we're good. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. And I am not even joking. So, um, we just moved into our new store, which you guys know. And we did, before the COVID hit, we were up 25% for the year, even with the move. And it's because we prepared with our posts and our ads so that people knew where to find us when it was time to book their appointment. So, all right, I did, I generally don't, recommend pinning something to the top of your page. But in this case, I did because we're reopening on June 1st. And I made this cute little clip art dealy here and animated it so that um, it would be interesting. I do a shared post every day so that we're engaging with each other. And then we show pictures of our products. Again, right now, my page is full of dresses on mannequins because we haven't been here for two and a half months. So we're, we're really quickly working to get back to real people and dresses and people shopping in the store. Those are super important as well as our yes sign people. So here's the thing we wanna do. When you come to your page every week, you want to make sure and check on your page insights. And your page insights are gonna teach you all kinds of things about your page so that you know it's more than about this number right here. The likes on each post are not the engagement for the post. They're just the likes on the post. This pet had 35 engagements. There's only 11 likes, right? So what were those other 24 things that happened? When you look at your insights, you can see that. And I'm trying to find my insights over here. Here we go, page insights, it sits right under more. And this is gonna show me my most popular posts. And then we're gonna look down into the guts of it to see what's what. So this is the last seven days. I'm gonna do the last 28 days. You scroll down and it will show you your five most recent posts. And when you do it on your phone, it'll show you your top five posts. And it'll tell you pages that you might wanna watch. So our five most recent posts, let's just go through here and look. Here's our little, they call this the whale. And it shows you what time most people are online and looking at things. Now, if you learn how to read your insights, you'll be able to understand what you pay for in ads. So 
number one, reach is the number of people who see your post and your engagement is what do they do when they've seen your post. So the shared post I saw got 1400 people saw it and we had 48 engagements. Now this I'm much more interested in. This is a post showing one of our new arrivals on mannequin, 1900 brides saw that and look how many engagements we had over here. That is awesome sauce. So let's click on this. So you can look at the post details because here is where you really get down to it. 1905 people reached, 36 reactions, comments, and shares, 180 post clicks, 146 photo views, 34 other clicks. Other clicks means they went somewhere else on this page and looked at stuff. So this is great. We had a ton of engagement on this. Why does that matter? Because you get search engine optimization for your Facebook page too. So the more clicks you get on a post, the better you're gonna rank when people are looking for a bridal store near you and your Facebook page has lots of action or your Instagram page, you'll rank for that as well as your website. And if you're using your ads manager, the ads are running people to Facebook and Instagram, so you're gaining ground on both of those. And if you're using your ads with the link to your website, you're gaining clicks in all three places by doing one ad in ads manager. So the reason you want to look at these by the post is so that you can see what is popular. And when you find out what's popular with your brides, you do more of that. All right, we're in 30 minutes, so I got to pick up the pace here. Um, how many people ask their brides questions before they come in to shop with them. Like on your bridal live, you have an intake form or the bride gets to your store and you ask questions and see what kind of awesome love you guys. So think about those questions and make posts with those kind of informational gathering tools. You respond to the answers that brides give you on that questionnaire. You can do the same thing on your Facebook page or on your Instagram page. Ask a question when you make the post and then listen to those answers and it'll show you how to get higher engagement on another post. So let's run down this list. We're still looking at our insights so we understand a little better. Here is one, we got 2000, I'm gonna click on it. Stunning styles for every bride. And this is a little video. This is actually a six minute video. I won't run it all the way through, but <clears throat> I was doing a little test on do long videos really work because Facebook keeps telling me people want longer videos when all our blogs that I read are like, anything over a minute is bad and most likely you're only gonna get 15 second view. So you don't warm up in the video, you go for the throat. The first three seconds are critical to getting the views. And this again was a test, test run. I can't see my little clicks over here because I see my face over here instead of the clicks. But anyway, we can tell. We got a bunch of views on this. We had 403, three second. We had 78, 10 second. And we had 11, one minutes. So we were right, the blogs are right. The smaller increments is where you're gonna get most of your viewers. So don't worry with making six minute videos. That's what that tells me. So you have to test market and find out. Um, let's go down and see some more. On the phone, it gives you the top, which dress. This, as usual, ladies, which dress is one of your best performing posts always, always, always. And we're trying to start a new hashtag. Y'all should do it with us, which dress Wednesday. So we just hashtag which dress and then put the name Wednesday after it, which one is your favorite? We reached almost 3,400 people. 
we had 191 post clicks, 91 reactions. So that's almost 300 clicks, comments, shares, actions. That's driving my SEO right now. And it can do the same for you. Okay. So for here's another kind of fun thing to do is figure out your change back to seven days on me, 28 days, page views, post reach, post engagement. You take your reach and your engagement and you can figure out your engagement ratio. So mine is running about 35 to 37%. You divide engagement by the number of people that you reached. Most retailers have less than 3% engagement on social media. So if you are doing better than 3%, you're already doing better than most retailers. Um, some other good benchmark information, 10% uh, to 12% is a big brand name. Usually their engagement is around 10 or 12%. You're doing better than that. You're doing better than most brands. If you are an influencer, you're, you run about 24 or 25% as a benchmark. Most of the stores in our bridal boutiques are well over influencer rates of engagement. Our reach won't be as much as an influencer, but our engagement usually blows the doors off because I'm sitting here about 35% and that's low for me because we've just come off of the COVID thing. So once you understand your reach and engagements, when you go into your ads manager, then we're gonna add one more component, which is what did that cost you? And the ad is super important because that is how you make sure you're getting bride's eyes on your page. So I'm going to try it again with screen sharing. Sorry, you're gonna have to bear with me a second. This explains everything. Can you see this? You will read this first. I'm gonna assume you can. When you're reading in, a, in your newsfeed, you're gonna look where the visual is first, where the picture is. Then you'll see if there's any kind of tagline with it, and then you'll go to the top of the post, and you're gonna read that last. So the words that you include with the post are not as important as the photos that go with the post. Of course, you want your words to pair with the post, but your visual has to be the most important thing. The visual is what makes people stop in the newsfeed to actually get to this point where they're gonna read your post. All right. Here's another one of these that shows the rest of your engagements. This was a super popular post and I started this picture with the super details. Start with your super detailed picture first and then show your full shots of the people. And I even do, there's a big question about should you show prices from your, on your posts? I'm a proponent of showing some prices. Or if people, you don't wanna show prices and people ask, you can give a range of prices or you can say this dress is X dollars as shown without any changes. So there's a way to talk about prices online without getting yourself in a tight spot. Now, I'm gonna talk real quickly about ads. We know our goal is 10 to 15 views to engage the bride to make her come and book an appointment with you. We have, as a general rule, three months to get that bride in before she's bought her dress somewhere else. So the quicker you get the 10 to 15 views, you get her before somebody else sells her dress. So I run multiple ads at a time and each ad will be seen two to three times if you've targeted and used your budget correctly. So right now, 
I love page likes, page post engagement, and a reach ad. And I went ahead and did a screenshot so you can see page likes are expensive, but that's okay because the page like is not really what I'm buying. That's an associated buy. I'm buying the 10 to 15 views per bride that makes her want to book with me. So if my page likes cost more than I want them to, I don't really worry about it. I worry about how many people saw this. So here, looking on this next one, we had 18,206 post engagements. They cost me a penny a piece. Does anybody know what Google AdWords cost per click? Because my clicks are costing a penny. So you might want to look at your numbers on that. Um, reach ad is also awesome. We reached almost 40,000 brides with this ad. It cost me $9.60 per thousand, which is still super cheap per click. So if you divide 960 by 1,000, you can see our cost is still very, very, very low. It's, I need my calculator to do that math. I always drop a zero. Let's talk about that real quick. Give me one second to get to the calculator. I know one of you do that in your head, but I forever mess up the zeros. 9.6 divided by 1,000. Yeah, that's a penny a piece again. Hands in the air for penny a piece engagements, y'all. Woo! So yeah, where do you want to spend your ad dollars? Where you can definitely target just brides and you get their eyes on your page so they get those 10 to 15 views and book the appointment with you. We have uh, 87 bookings for June from three weeks of these three ads right here. Right here. You can do it too. That is one of the ads. That's another one of the ads. This was actually, believe it or not, 18,000 people saw this. This was a longer uh, ad I did using hair accessories. This was all about the accessories. And this one had lots of styles of dresses in it. And um, let's talk about the anatomy of an ad a minute. We've got five more minutes I want to talk about. This is super important. When you're creating an ad, they're only going to see about 18 words up here at the top. So many styles, so many hashtag smiles. We love helping you find your bridal style. Reopening June 1st. Join us for your fun. And you can preview this. Then they're going to have to click see more. And that's where you're going to see my phone number and the link to um, make an appointment on my website. So when you write an ad, you can't warm up to the idea with the words. They're going to see 18 words. Get the point across immediately and make it pair with what your visual is. And you will have much better success with it. Here's my favorite ad combo again. When we have money rolling in, I roll four ads at a time and I add a video views. If you are on super budget, which most of us are right now, go with reach, engagement, post ad, which is also known as a boosted post, and video views. When you're back in the money and you can afford to spend more time growing your page SEO, work on your page likes, because the more page likes you have, the more followers you have, the more people see your posts, the more people who can respond to the post, the higher your SEO climbs for your Facebook, your Instagram, your website, because your ads, drive people to all three of those places simultaneously, and you are going to get placement higher when a bride is looking for a store near you. So these are my favorite apps, and we're gonna include these screenshots with the link later, so you guys will have that, because these are things that I use all the time. I just now started fooling with this iMovie, which I know if you're, we're friends on Facebook, you've probably seen me post in too many videos, because. When I get started on a new app, there you go. Pit collage, super awesome. You gotta love it. You gotta have a video editor because a lot of times when we're videoing in the store, the copyrighted music is in the background. And until things change further and Facebook starts paying like TikTok does for music rights, you still cannot have copyrighted music on your business Facebook page or they will shut you down. 
So that change is coming. It's just not quite here yet. So that's a tip to know. Do not use copyrighted music on your Facebook page or on your ads unless you want to get shut down. Um, video collage, another handy do deal. Dropbox, I highly recommend it. It's a little bit bulky to use, but it's great because if I'm at home working on ads and things for bridal boutiques instead of here at the store to access all our tablets, I can pull up Dropbox. I see everything that's been done that day. I take off my favorites to make the posts and ads, and I'm good to go if I'm in um, Chicago at market. I can go in my Dropbox. I know my ladies in the store have been putting goodies in there for me. I can do my posts on the fly. I can get my ads done. You can do it too. That Dropbox with a daily upload from your cameras and devices at work, invaluable. Okay, here's when you pull up on your phone, the page insights are so much easier on your phone. This is what it looks like. It'll show you your reach, engagements, and there's 300 links. Link clicks are always to my website. You can use posts to drive people to your website as well. And here were my top five um, posts. That'll be in there too. I made a note again so that you have this, get your 10 to 15 engagements for bride, use consistent page posts and ads. 10 to 15 views creates the relationship, which means higher engagement, which means more appointments. And then make sure and look at your insights as well on your Instagram because they're there. We use our Instagram page to show people primarily how they feel here. We use our Facebook to show how you feel plus a ton of products. So this was a one week reach on our Instagram. And it'll show you under activity and audience all these little nitpicking bits of information. You need to know those things. The better you know your audience and what they like, the better your ads will be, the better your posts will be, the more engagements you'll get, the more bookings you will get. It pays once a week to look at your insights, take note of what's working, do more of that. Questions? Cool. Um, do you want to get started with the questions now? Anybody have a question? I saw one just come through in the chat. Um, Valerie, wait, no. Um, Debbie is asking, if you share the TikTok ad to both Instagram and Facebook, will they shut you down for that? So I think that's related to the, um, the video. I think you're okay on that. But you're, if you've already done it to your page and they didn't shut you down, you're golden. Would I use it as an ad? No, I wouldn't because they can, in fact, shut you down for that. So if you're getting away with it as posts, go for it. But in ads, they are hardcore about copyrighted and copyright infringement. Awesome. Good to know. Okay, we got a new message down here. What well, are you charging? So funny that she said on here, insights on Instagram don't look like that anymore. It just changed. I took those screenshots today, Bryn. I have a secret for you. Facebook and Instagram roll out in different areas of the country. Things look different in different areas. And so I'll probably see this, Jessica, I'll probably see what you're seeing, but it'll be a little later since I'm in uh, East Tennessee, maybe. Okay, um, Valerie is asking, what are you charging to do ads for stores? I guess they could follow up with you afterwards. Or, yeah. Get yeah. in touch with me because the win is being part of the ad group. Um, we have reached, I know I did a post in our industry chat that shows what our stats were and we were killing it, killing it. So awesome. I'll tag you on there, Valerie, so you can see it and we'll get in touch on costs. Okay. Um, all right. Raina is asking, can you explain ad likes, engagement, and reach? Are all these on Facebook slash Instagram? Okay. Can I see that? If you click on Q&A. I see Zoom chat. Q&A. Here we go. Sorry, I'm on the wrong thing again. All right. Ad likes, engagements, and reach. Yep. We just talked about that. So reach is the number of people 
how many brides did you reach with that ad, right? Your targeted audience. How many people and your targeted audience did you reach? So that's number of people. If you targeted properly, you're reaching all brides and reaches your friend because you know how many people. Now, engagements and likes are the same thing. Engagements are likes, comments, shares, and views. So you can really dig down into that on the um, page insights and you'll see reach and that's how many people saw it. And then your engagement is in fact, likes, comments, shares, and views. Okay. All right, we have another question that just came through. What is the best way to target to make sure we are hitting brides? Okay, um, that is in, when you target, you're going to look for, um, it's demographics. This is why, I know I'm pointing, <laughs> but it's super important. You want to spend your money on brides. And I'm gonna tell you how to do it, but I wanna just side note, because you're gonna be tempted to say, well, that's not many people in my ad, add miles, don't add other interests, just go with engaged. So in the little box where you're targeting interests or demographics, just type the word engaged. And that will pull up all the women that our relationship status is engaged. And then those will be the only people who see your ad. There are also other ways to do it, but that is the easiest one. And you, of course, don't wanna do it for the United States because there's 2.4 million brides in the United States. You only want the ones near you. Then your ad dollars are working for you. Because, you know, I'm in East Tennessee. If I, and we do have brides now, I've worked since 2013 to get our drive radius up to six drive. We are a regional store now. We have brides from seven states. And I don't mean once a month, I mean every week. Every week we have those brides coming in. Right now, maybe not as much. We're, we're within a two, two hour drive right now because of the, the plague. Um, but when we were going full tilt in prom and bridal, we easily had up to four hour drive every week from the surrounding states. That's awesome, that's great. So you target the areas you want to come to you. And you as and the so, store owner know where most of your brides come from. Super side note, when you're talking about, it's not just targeting the right brides, it's spending the money properly. When you go to the grocery store, you could put everything, you know, as many carts as you could fill up, right? It's like, I want this and I want that. This is the same thing in ads manager. You're only gonna leave with what you pay for, right? You can't buy all the eggs if you only have $12. So, you want to make sure that you're buying the brides near you and that you're spending the right amount of dollars so that you get your ads in front of her to get those 10 views. So you want, it's like basically a buck for 75 brides. So when you go in and you've targeted your brides that are within so many miles of your store, it'll say potential audience. And I'm just gonna say, 10 to 12,000 people is a good audience size. You wanna spend $5 a day on that for a 30 day ad. That's just an easy way to understand it. Sure. Do a minimum 10 to 12,000 people in the audience, make sure they're engaged, that they're near you and the town's near you that your bride's shop from, spend $5 a day. And that's a good ad. Awesome. And then um, somebody is asking in here, this is a good question, for prom, how would you, you know, would you further define that audience or would you, do you prefer to do just the one word category, you know, audience filler? I do two things for a prom. One is just prom, but all girls near me that are within, I do 15 to 19. If I have a bigger budget, I'll do 15 to 20. And here's why, because some girls lie about their age to get on social media. So if you only do 15 to 18, you're probably missing a lot of the actual prom age girls. Sure. Um, I am, my store specifically carries a lot of plus size. So I add an interest of plus size clothing, but I do that by narrowing the ad. First I do girls who are interested in prom. Then there's a little blue word under that. You narrow the audience to include plus size clothing, plus size shopping, 
interest a plus size. That's going to super narrow that ad down. I'll make that a plus size, like true plus size, 22, 24 girls in dresses in my store in that ad because you have to show big girls if you want big girls to show up. So I do a wide audience if it's just prom, but if I'm focusing on my plus size, then I'll add extra interest. Otherwise, not so much. Nice. If you're carrying a designer nobody else has, you could add that as an interest. Mm -hmm. But if it makes your audience less than 10,000 people, you're not gonna reach enough people to drive traffic. Right, awesome. Um, okay, so switching gears a little bit, what, why would someone want to share in an Instagram or Facebook story um, instead of just sharing an ad? You want to do both. Okay. This is, this is the win. It's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of work. But if you're producing the content, you show up and do your posts, you do your stories. Stories, this is the good news, because I know I've told you before, do not share the same post on Instagram and Facebook. Right. Stories, yes. Share it on Facebook and Instagram. You only have to do the work once on Instagram. Do it there because there's all those little jumping people and cute things <laughs> and polls. Do that on Instagram. Push it to your Facebook page. It's now hitting your page insights, which will drive your organics up. One work doing two jobs. I love it. Great. So right. you want to do both ads and posts and stories. I guess that's right. do all three. Okay. Um, do your vendors help you with the ads to highlight new products? No, I, I run my own. Okay. Over here. I don't need my vendors to help me. I know what is popular in my store. Sure. And what's best sellers. You know, you own this store. You know what your bride's like. And if you're doing multiple posts a day and your ads are driving local brides, your page insights are going to show you what they like you will find trends while you're at market. I saved a mint. I know I've told y'all this story before, but I saved a mint doing uh, when those pantsuits first came out. I loved them, but I was like, I don't think it's for my market. Like my store, I couldn't see people buying them, but I kept seeing them on the runway and they were in every showroom and people are buying them. And I was like, you know, for me, that's a big buy-in because we carry to size 32. So if I carry pantsuits, I'm gonna be stocking from zeros to 32 and I'm gonna have to have at least three styles. And I'm gonna buy three each, so that's 10 items. That's, you know, you guys know what an investment that is. So I took pictures on the runway of those beautiful pantsuits and I said, yay or nay on your wedding day, jumpsuits, pantsuits. Mm -hmm. And it was an overwhelming, these are beautiful, but no, I would not wear that on my wedding day. And I right. waited to buy pantsuits until people wanted them here. And I did that pre-market, that saved me 10 grand. Yeah. So you spend your money better. This right. is a tool, use it. Because right. this audience, it's give and take, it's back and forth. If you ask them, they will tell you. That's great. And so kind of in that same vein, do you feel like you experience a lot of the times in your store, like when someone has come for an appointment and they say, you know, I saw this on your social, I saw this here, yeah. I wanna try that on. Do. We get a lot of that now where people come in and show us our own photos and that is what they want to try on. Now we, we get tons of people with their Pinterest. You know, we all look at our bride's Pinterest mm -hmm. and that is predominantly pictures from our vendors. And that's a great place. If you've got a Pinterest, use your manufacturer pictures there on your social. I'm going to give you a little clue. How many people have broken up with a brand of dresses, like a dress, ma dress manufacturing partner? How many people have broken up with a partner? I know everybody's hand is up somewhere. So <clears throat> they can get your page turned off if, if they tell you to remove their pictures and you have even one left up, you can be hit for copyright infringement. It's easy to remove from your website. It is easy to remove a block from your Pinterest. What is not easy is going through and finding one designer's pictures because you may have carried them for years. You could have 300 posts and if you miss one and they find it and they have things that find that easily, you can get your page shut down. Social media is not the place for your designer pictures or not Facebook and Instagram anyway. Use your designer pictures on your website, use it on your Pinterest board, use your social media to brand you, 
your stylists, your store, your brides. Yep. Great. Uh, what's your take on TikTok? I think it is a super, super fun platform and we will be doing it here. We were just getting into it when the, when we shut down for COVID. We shut down a little bit before some people. So. Sure. That's on our to-do board. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll look for those posts. I think that I agree. I think they're super fun and, um, you know, could be a fun way to engage, but, um, you know, it takes, I think people are still migrating over to TikTok if they want to use it or not. So definitely I would say, you know, depends on your area and your brides. Um, no, okay. It, so I, it's silly, you know, and that's right. the thing, just like with flow, be a little silly. Sometimes people want that. We're all a little silly. Sometimes enjoy that. Um, so this is a question I think a lot of people have thought about. So I want to circle back to it. So Jessica says, I've never heard to post, to not post the same content on Facebook and Instagram. So double post. I've been doing this with different engagement on both. Should I not? I wouldn't just because you're going to have some crossover. If you're being consistent with your ads, you don't want to bore people. This is the danger of online when they say the same thing over and over they disengage. They're just like, meh. I call it fresh meat. You want fresh meat on both pages. Use the stories on both. That's your one double dip. But if you want to engage with them and they're looking, one bride is looking and she probably will because they go everywhere. They look at all the platforms. Trust me. You do not want your Facebook to be the same as your Instagram. Your big fan brides are going to be looking at both places and they want to see something new both places. Okay, good. All right, two last two questions before we wrap up today. I think that these are um, great, a great way to end. So advice for a new business, how would they get their name out there? And especially, I maybe you have a part two to that answer in thinking of people's re reopenings. I've been seeing a mm -hmm. lot of that from stores doing their reopenings. So um, advice for new businesses and then advice for the stores that are, you know, opening up and how they can get their name out there. Ads and posts. It's the same answer every day. These th ads, posts, and stories, these three things leave a, leave a story and it's your story. And when you combine that into your website, that is how you get brides to you by investing in that ad. And the minimum ad for 30 days, $150 each, 10 to 12,000 people in the audience, make sure you're targeting engaged women. And if you run three ads at one time, you can create a story out of those three ads. You get your 10 views within 30 to 45 days. You get the bride in before she's purchased somewhere else. We had 87 bookings for June so far, and we're not done from three weeks of three ads running. You can do it too. You just have to make the financial commitment to it. What's one don't for social media? One don't. Don't use manufacturer pictures. Use your pictures. Okay. okay. And I could probably think of another one. Don't use copyrighted music. We already talked about that. <laughs> Unless you're just sharing a TikTok to your page. Because that's kosher for some reason, but not as an ad. Mm -hmm. Don't go on a rant. Don't be hateful. Let's share the love. And let, can, I, can I ask one thing before we go? Could we all yeah. just take a minute together? I don't want to get emotional about this, but we, we have come through such a thing. We're all beginning to reopen. We're going through this, you know, protests and understandably so, and the rioting, which is terrifying. We could all just take a minute together and just think loving, positive thoughts for our world and our business and our friends and and people we hope to have be our friends and brides. I think that would be such a strong thing to do together. Sure. Hmm. Okay, moment of we're all in this together, stronger together. Yeah. Thank you. <sighs> okay. Um we had two more questions come in. I Okay. Would love to end on a high note, but I think that we can, might as well, since we're here, we can get through yeah, those. Let's do it. Um, okay. So recommendations for plans like later. So scheduling your posts in advance. Um, do you have 
are you against that or do you, you know, what are your thoughts on? I like to, what I do is going to be different than what you do because I have the bridal boutiques thing and I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all of it all the time. So I schedule by the day. You and your store may need to schedule several days out or if you have a part-time person who's helping you with posts but you're doing your own ads, you can do a week out. At the end of that week, go back, look at what's scheduled, look what happened with it, and then see what you want the person to focus on next week and make sure the questions are in there. So I am a fan of scheduling. Facebook has a new component. Well, it's not super new, but it's called Creator. And you can schedule your Instagram and your Facebook from the Creator portion of Facebook. Right, right, I do that. Okay, and then hashtagging the designers. So I kind of see Facebook and Instagram hashtags working differently. So do you, do you, uh, do you think that way too? And then as far as hashtagging, hashtagging on either platform goes, what are your recommendations, um, especially when it comes to hashtagging or tagging designers? You heard me whisper that. I don't do it. I don't, if we have a bride and it's a, and she wants to tag the dress designer, we will do it. But as a general rule, it's my brand. It's our dresses, it's our brides, it's our thing. So I don't tag my designers. Okay, good to know. I mean, that's one way of doing things. I feel like there's, you know, just. Yeah, there's so many ways. And, and if you have that relationship and your designers are tagging you and it's working well back and forth and you wanna do that, I'm all for it. This is one of those each store owner has to do her own thing. I'm a big fan of my brand and my store and it's a gilded gown bride and it's a gilded gown dress going down the aisle. Okay, yep. Um, okay, I think that answers all of our questions for today. Um, you know, we just wanna reiterate the safety and health for all of you guys that have tuned in and our full community. Um, we're super happy that you all took time to Join us today. We will be sharing a recorded version of this online on our YouTube and emailing it out to everyone who attended as, long, as well as some notes from Jackie. So look forward to that coming into your inboxes tomorrow morning. And if you have any questions for us, we are always available and um, look forward to connecting with you all again soon. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, bye everyone. Bye.